To the concrete was the sentence that was written uh, over Bertolt Brecht's desk in his Danish exile, in very big letters. And he was quoting Lenin, quoting Hegel, quoting Augustine. In a time of uh, extreme political turbulence, in the late 30s in Europe, it was a constant reminder never to forget the reality, the reality around him. In another corner of the study, there was a wooden donkey which had a big sign around his head and it was written on it, also I have to understand it. So for these next seven days, we propose to take the possibility of concrete, action, the concrete truth as a work hypothesis, to look at direct action, concrete change in knowledge, for an art that not only represents and documents, but that engages in very specific political and social situations, for an activism that not only acts for the sake of acting, but searches for intelligence, creative means of self-empowerment, artistic strategies in politics, political strategies in art. So very welcome to you all. After months of preparations and discussions, we are obviously very happy to see you here. And we hope for a very fruitful and concrete week of reflection and exchange. This is supposed to be a platform, a kind of, I guess, knowledge machine, an exchange and communication facility, but also hopefully a place for meeting and getting to know each other and some fun, obviously. Um, we chose this obviously provoking quote of the Dutch right-wing politician Gerd Wilders, who fortunately got a little bit less votes uh, a week ago. Um, Art is a leftist hobby. And we chose it as a negative motto because it was bothering us. And actually it was bothering us not only because it's, it's meant to be a provocation, but it was bothering us because we could not e as easily dismiss it as we would have liked to. Isn't indeed the status of art reduced more and more to the relevance of a mere hobby? And it isn't indeed self-reflection and self-critique of art turned too often into self-involvedness and or even self-indulgence. So over one and a half years ago, when we decided to work on this topic and to use this form of the marathon and the camp, uh, the Arab Spring was still a spring, and the summer of Occupy hadn't started yet. Uh, the so-called Euro crisis obviously was all over the news already, and the nuclear catastrophe in Fukushima just have had happened. The huge demonstrations and the disappointing or disillusioning elections in Russia were yet to come. But so it was very obvious that something was changing very rapidly in many ways in many corners of the world, but um, not in which way, as it is now still not, in which way that would come together, or if it would come together if it was by accident at the same time or not. And of course, everywhere where politics were in motion and were shaking up, there were artists among the first ones to join the movements to get involved. Um, but the question that kept reoccurring all the time was, was there also art in there? Was there a role of art in these situations? Or were the artists and people just there as, just there as citizens? So it was clear that in all these discussions that uh, it was a time where we, as artists, theorists, curators, had to question ourselves and what we are doing and why. How we position ourselves, what our responsibilities are. Not only in critiquing our field, not only in critiquing our own institutions or formats, but also in relation to society, to the world, I guess. So I think most of us shared the strong feeling that we could not just wait and see how things would develop, and what answers would come up and derive over time. So we had a strong feeling that we should not only try to understand what was going on, but to try to directly engage and to take part in shaping this discourse. So for me, for us, it seems that truth is concrete comes at a time where maybe something par uh, is happening like a paradigm shift again in the relationship between art and politics. I think a generation of philosophers derived to complex and abstract theoretical concepts from their own and very concrete experiences and their engagement. And it was, they were followed in a way by a generation of philosophers and artists, curators for that matter, that continued their thought, but often without binding, binding them back to a contemporary concrete reality. So in a way we got used to, to, call, to con call concepts, cultural theories, political, even if they are only quite distantly based on some theories that originally were based on a political thought. And uh, so 
that seems like a very homopathetic pathetic, homeopathic way, <laughs> second-hand interpretation of a political philosophy that, that became the main guideline of art, art discourse in the last years. So the classic leftist idea of the private is the political was meant to politicize the private, but it seems that it rather privatized the political. And the idea of the aesthetical as the political was meant to politicize the aesthetical, the aesthetical, but it seemed that it rather aestheticized the political. So we learned to replace critique with criticality, criticality for the political with the post-political, neoliberal capitalism with cultural capitalism. But where the answers get too, too difficult and too complicated and abstract, the desires for simple solutions is growing as well. So art seems to have lost contact with the larger base. The constant awareness of the complexity of the notions of truth, reality, or even politics seem to have maneuvered us in some kind of a dead-end road. Either we are too simple or we are too complex, too populist or too stuck in hermitism. Either we include too, too much or we exclude too many. We reach the point where the necessity, necessary awareness that everything is contingent and relative is in danger of becoming just intellectual relativism. And that's why the, we try to focus with this marathon on very consequent, even radical interpretations of what art, what art could be, on an art that very directly and hands-on gets involved. So over the next seven days, we want to investigate what art can be and what politics could be for that matter. So what, what is to be done? Can art solve problems that politics and societies themselves have ignored for so long? Should art be a social or political tool? Can it be useful? And why should artists know what to do when nobody else does? Art and politics have always been in strong love-hate relationships. In this project, we purposely ignore the many borders, conflicts, and resentments. Art is not activism, and activism is not art, but the common ground, the shared space, is large, and I believe growingly important. It is a space that offers a chance for art to be engaged, connected and relevant. It is a space that offers activism a chance to get not stuck in ideology, routine and, and functionarism, a chance to stay unpredictable and sharp. It is this space where we try to build this camp on and from where we want to take a close look at what happens when the differences between art and activism lose importance. By focusing on artistic strategies in politics and political strategies in art, so by focusing on strategies, we also hope to stay concrete, to talk about specific tools and specific ways of doing and thinking. We hope to avoid some of the usual suspect dead-end discussions about some ideologies. We hope not to only think together, but also find maybe some solution for implementing. To create collaborations that might be considered unlikely, so to the concrete is an invitation to show each other what we do, what we developed, what we are good at, to exchange tactics and strategies. The most, probably most popular definition of strategies and tactics in our field come from Michel de Certeau, uh, who called strategy the calculation or manipulation of power relationships that become possible as soon as the subject will and of will and power, a business, an army, a city, a scientific institution can be isolated. So strategies for him belong to the ones in power. Tactic, on the other hand, is, as he says, the art of the weak. The, the tactics fight this power. They fight, it operates in isolated actions, blow by blow. It takes advantage of opportunities and depends on them being without any base where it could stockpile its winning, build up its own position, plan it rates. So, but we chose the term strategies in our subtitle purposely, not only because we're an institution, and by Desato probably would be one of the subjects with will and power, but we're interested in how the consequent use of tactics, the combination of certain tactics, the invention of tactics follow strategies or how they can form strategies. We also think that we need a base to quote De Sato again, not to stockpile the winnings perhaps, but to collect our attempts, approaches, and our tactics. 
So this is why at the center of this marathon, where a lot of different things are going on, there are short, we call them tactic talks, tech talks, uh, short presentation of 25 minutes, where only one action, one proposal, one project, one tactic is presented. So these, these talks, in a way, build for us the nucleus around um, maybe, where around maybe some kind of toolbox in progress can happen. So there, additionally, there are curated blocks, thematic blocks, where we ask people to create, to bring on their own knowledge, bring on in other people, and to com connect some of these tactics and strategies. So there will be obviously, and that's a bit in the nature and maybe also the problem of this project, there will be a lot of talking about things that are happening um, and things that are happening elsewhere. But uh, we, we, that's why also the performances, the concerts, and I think also the concrete production of knowledge and exchange of knowledge, they are themselves strategies and they are the thing themselves. So with 170 hours, 200 active, artists, activists, theorists, and additionally 100 grants in a machine that runs non-stop, often too fast, often too slow, all day and all night, and try to produce something, arguments, knowledge, it will also create frustration and exhaustion. So does this marathon as an idea, is it not just another neoliberal idea of too much uh, of extreme labor, permanent availability, etc. So that was, of course, something which came up in discussion very often. Does it not just prolong the race in which we are always already struggling nonstop in our capitalist environments? Wouldn't it be better to take time to slow down to think? But for us, it was something else in, in the opposite. So taking break might not gonna help. This machine of 170 hours does not pose a task that can be fulfilled. It's not possible to do it. It's not like uh, the popular marathons in art field of 12 or 24 hours. It's not something if you really try hard, you're gonna manage. You obviously don't. The marathon, something like this, it cannot be easily commodified. It cannot be easily con consumed. So in a way it is inconsumable. There's no right time, there's no highlights that you have to see and the others are not so interesting. You cannot just see two hours and then you get the whole thing. It might be the right time to stay awake at night or during the day. So having to miss is part of having to make choices. It's not about getting it all. Uh, and this was also when we thought about it, it was kind of a metaphor for political movements. Like when I remember coming to Occupy Wall Street, when you come for an hour or two, you talk to some people, you see some tents, and then you go home and think it's nice or not nice. And then you can, if you come back, you will join some committees, you will get involved, you maybe engage, you will try to change things to discuss. And of course, the people that stay there were non-stop are even in a different mode. So I think maybe this week will produce something like this, of people coming in, having short glances, getting a good or a bad lecture, getting a good or bad film, and others that get into some other modes. So this is, yeah, to, to, to also confront different kinds of intensities. Um, Raumlabor Berlin did the, the installation of the camp, and also I think is sleeping there in this box at the moment. Uh, so they, they, they thought about this idea of the marathon in the middle and the, the camp around it. There, many of you know it, but for the, those who just came, there are dormitories on the other side, there's a library project, a privacy project, there's uh, workshops, there's a hairdresser by a haircut before the party, there's an exhibition, there are many things going on around, uh, which don't have a time, they're open 24 hours, so you can take your own time whenever you want and spend it there. And maybe most important, there's an open marathon based on self-organization. So the content that is produced by the participants, contributors, everybody who wants to fill in something spontaneously or with some days in advance. And uh, it already fills up a bit, but we will see. When I talked to it about, with Kirk in Ergun about it, he actually said oh, he would only want to be in the open marathon because he thinks that will be the more interesting place. If it gets so, we, it will be good, we will see. So, yes, maybe it is all too much, uh, but we try to create some kind of one-week community mixing day and night. 
developing our own jet lag, so if you come from a different time zone, just keep it, and the others can join you in. And um, I think everybody will have his own way through it, and uh, of course, since some of us that uh, plan this thing come, come rather from a background of theater and performance, the intensity of bodies, the, in the intensity of being together, being a, um, being a collective in some way, or a loose collective, of being exhausted, of falling asleep, of waking up, all this is for us not just a byproduct, but it's, I think, also in the core of the whole thing. So is this all too much? Maybe. But maybe we have no time to lose. The world keeps changing, and the marathon is a working meeting. An extreme effort is a time that seems to need extreme efforts. So, now I'm actually too fast, very good. You have a 15 minutes break, or we start with the next lecture earlier. <laughs> timing, timing obviously is very important, and um, we will keep part of this rule of this game, which might create frustration, but maybe also stops boring lectures fast, uh, will be to, to try to keep this time frame very rigidly. Uh, but there are other spaces around, so there's a continuity room in the, in the building next uh, to this building where every conversation can just continue, so people can just go there, grab the, the lecturer or whomever was there before and, and continue the conversation. There's the open marathon, there are many spaces, so uh, there's no need to stop any conversation by, uh, by the gong, which I will now also use. <laughs> 